Welcome back to our Blue Z Water channel. Today I just want to go over a couple of diagnostic tools that really help monitor the practices you're doing. So these are very simple tools. One, which most people are familiar with, is you can buy a blood pressure checker and check your blood pressure. The second tool we're going to show you is called a pulse oximeter. I'll show you that now. Here's a bunch of them, pulse oximeters. This reads the oxygen level in your blood. So here on this example, oxygen level is 94 and the pulse, it gives you pulse too, is 86. It's very quick, you stick your finger in there and you get a reading. So depending on the altitude you're at, 90 and below is not good. Around 94, 95 is good. Some people go 98, but you want to try to stay around 93, 4, 5. We live at very high altitude, so the readings can be a little lower. Um, so if you're doing a practice and your oxygen levels go up, that's good. If your oxygen levels go down or, or you consistently think it's a good practice and you don't see any change, chances are it's, you, you know you need to keep looking. The last thing I want to talk to you about is this is called a Muse Meditation Headband. I'll just play a piece here. Basically, you put this on like this. There are sensors in the front here that read your brainwave from the front, and then there's two sensors that go right on your temple. And you, it'll tell you when you're making a good connection. You power it on, you hook it up with your Bluetooth, it'll hook up with the app, and the app will step you through what you need to do. Sounds like a pretty so awesome for, device. Yeah, it's, you know, they, um, they're trying to make it simple in terms of figuring out what is considered what they call focus meditation. So it's pretty proprietary. They put a lot of time into, into working with the brainwaves and really interpreting what would be considered a coherent brainwave activity. There's another app called the Muse Monitor where you can actually watch your brainwaves in real time all the brain waves it's show and it has different graphs it's quite involved you can google that one use monitor and uh, if you're interested in just watching your brain waves in real time nice uh, so in our next segment we're going to discuss particularly the how this is an amazing asset tool for people doing the emotion code work but in general for those who are doing any meditation practice i would suggest putting this device on. You can listen to the feedback so you're in real time with your practice, or you could just do your practice and then look at the report. We're gonna show you, in fact, I'll show you a quick screenshot right now. This is actually while I was doing the emotion code. So it shows you the calm, you can see the graph. Active would be out of meditation, neutral is kind of, you're not quite in, and then calm is where you're really deep down in. So when I actually went into the emotion code for 20 minutes this morning, I had virtually all continuously and calm. That's impressive. But, right, so now this, I will discuss this in the next segment. There's people who do the emotion code, this can be an enormous tool. So this is the, so basically what's nice about this is you can get a snapshot of a half hour and you can actually see if you're improving and this with is your the, meditation this practice. Is the free app, right? That comes with your yes, it's, okay. it's free. Okay, so with the Muse meditation headband, I actually this is very interesting. They sell it as a biofeedback device. So if you're meditating, you can see if you're going down into meditative brainwave state. So as you get this biofeedback, and if you're not in meditative state, you're trying to subconsciously adjust. And it's giving you kind of a sense of whether your meditation practice is working or not. So I used it to monitor our Breathe Like a Yogi for Dummies practices, and we do have a video on that. And it just kept going down and down. And the longer I did it, the deeper my brainwave activity went into meditation. At the end, it was a 91% meditative brainwave state. So you can Google Muse Meditation Headband and understand how it's working, but they have a graph so you can get a readout at the end and see what you're doing. And we do have videos showing that. 
So that confirmed what I already knew that the breathing practice was awesome. And then I checked it with another practice I do, which is called the emotion code. And that's a way to seek out deep subconscious memories that cause stress. And that took me right into meditation instantly as soon as I started doing that practice. And it stayed consistent at 80%, right from the beginning across the board. So the pulse oximeter, for instance, you could do the breathing practice and see if your oxygen levels go up. And you can monitor it maybe over a week or two. So do the breathe like EOB for dummy practice. Use the pulse oximeter. Here it is. Oops. There we go. If you want to invest in the Muse Meditation headband, uh, it's bit expensive, but if you want to just really see the efficacy of your practice and of course, blood pressure. Now, uh, please study these techniques, breathe like EOE for dummies and understand how it affects oxygen levels. So if you're doing that practice consistently, your oxygen levels should go up. However, you have really deep troubles with microcirculation, you might need to do four or five, six things. So anyhow, once again, pulse oximeter, blood pressure, and um, the, muse, the EEG device are excellent ways to see if your practices are working. So we've been doing this a long time. Our focus is on deep relaxation, microcirculation, energy flow. Uh, we understand this core concept in Chinese medicine called key stagnation. Key stagnation represents the blockage of flow of energy on all levels, really. It's a more global idea. Also, it includes consciousness. The deeper Chinese practitioners in the old days before communist China were very aware of the mind's insidious infection on the energy body. So in a, you can approach it to kind of both release the energy, more of a martial artist approach or a Qigong approach, or you go deeper like the old masters did into meditation. So we include both a Chinese medicine approach to healing, explaining this blockage of energy flow, and then we go deeper into the Ho'oponopono consciousness teachings, which are really at the root saying, look, what's causing the energy to block are these deep, deep, insidious memories that we can't clean. And they're talking about the cleaning process the nature of these memories, where they come from, and how to approach them. All right, so contact me if you want any assistance with these monitoring devices, and we encourage you to uh, pulse oximeter cheap, 35 bucks, uh, blood pressure monitor cheap. So we encourage you to get the old fashioned uh, blood pressure check system. A lot of these auto blood check devices are inaccurate, um, but if you go on Amazon and you see one that's highly reviewed, definitely cross check it in a doc, bring it into a doctor's office and check it against uh, their old fashioned system. I really trust that system the best. So, alrighty, um, any questions, contact me, andrew at bluesywater.com. Thank you.